Another day. Uh, another Detroit Tigers move, actually. Uh, we have a waiver claim to go over, and we're also going to knock out two more players with our deep dive series, I guess we'll call it. So two players to talk about and a Tigers move, a waiver claim that we'll take a look at all today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. Thank you for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Okay. Detroit Tigers have... We're going to start with the move that, uh, that, that the Tigers made, I think. I think that that's probably the way to go. So... The Tigers made a waiver claim on Wednesday, those are the days of the week, and officially claimed pitcher Sam Gunther from the Miami Marlins. He is 26 years old. He'll be 27 in December, so next season will be his age 27 season. Uh, He was a seventh-round pick from the Miami Marlins in 2017 and had Tommy John surgery right before this season started. So did not pitch at all, did not pitch a single inning at any level in 2022. So that is the waiver claim that they made. Now, it's important to note for these waiver claims, not all of them will are, are longed for this roster, okay? It, this isn't, uh, oh, he, he, you know, all these waiver claims that Scott Harris is making, all these dudes are going to be on the roster long-term or whatever. Not going to be the case, okay? Now, If you have openings, you want to utilize them, go for it, right? Why not? This is really what the name of the game is for right now is Scott Harris is going and looking at the – because we've made, what, three waiver acquisitions already in the the offseason. So what he's doing is just going around and he's looking at the the waiver wire and basically determining, okay, if I bring this person in – Basically, in free agency then, or trades, or winter meetings, or whatever, in the offseason, if I am not able to fill all 40 roster spots of the 40-man roster with people that I wanted, I then have these waiver guys that are going to come in and fill in those those holes, basically, right? So it's basically a way to just guarantee that he can still get quote unquote his guys right people that he likes players that he likes um without you know batting a thousand in the off season essentially so we'll see how many of them are are longed for the roster and and how many if any are on the 40 man roster after the first wave of 40 man roster cuts and everything this winter but for right now, we do have the acquisition of Sam Gunther. And I'm I'm pretty I, I like Sean Gunther. Sorry, I just said Sam. Sean Gunther. I kind of like it. Okay. And again, not saying that he's guaranteed gonna be pitching like at the MLB level or anything like that. But I I really I kind of like this move. I kind of like this profile. Okay. So just bear with me. Bear with me here. In 2019, he was 23 years old. And in high single A for the Miami Marlins. End of the season in high single A. He had a 2.55 ERA, a 9.35 K per nine, and a 1.28 walk per nine. For those who don't know, a 1.28 walk per nine is very low. That is very, very low. And a 9.35 K per nine coming out of the bullpen, not bad, right? A little over a strikeout an inning. Not a bad rate. That's kind of like the the bar of like if you're above a K in inning, that's kind of looked at as pretty solid. If you're under, that's kind of looked like as a, as a little low. For a reliever, maybe that's a little bit higher. But that, that's not a bad number, okay? 2020, there's no minor league season. He's not on the 40-man. 2021, in double A in 2021, that's where he started. He pitched 17 innings, had a 102 ERA, a 13.25 K per nine and a 1.53 walk per nine. Very solid. 
Very, very solid. Very low walk rate, very high K rate, an ERA of one. Just unbelievable all around. He gets prone to AAA, and in 2021, ends the season there. Has just under 23 innings pitched, 159 walk per nine, 11.12 K per nine, and a 476 ERA. Now, he would also log 20 innings at the major league level in 2021, and he had an ERA over nine, was walking people at a pretty high clip. Well, for his standards, a 4.43 walk per nine and a 6.64 K per nine is very low. So really struggled at the major league level, obviously. Um, in those 20 innings, he appeared in 14 games at the end of the 2021 season. But he started that year in double A. That, that's a lot to, uh, to, to jump up. And then this season, again, Tommy John right before the season started. This is a really crazy profile with the walk numbers. Like, this is incredibly low. So much so that when you're looking at walk percentage, his 3.6 in high single A, 4.5 in double A, and then 4.3 in triple A in 2021, that is some of the lowest. There were a couple articles out there that cited that that was some of the lowest walk rates that the Marlins minor league system for like people that had pitched legitimate innings uh, had seen, which is unbelievable stuff. But really, really impressive, impressively low walk numbers. And the K numbers to go with it, again, at a few of the levels have been pretty solid. And like I said, struggled, kind of got punched in the mouth there when he came up and, uh, and got some innings at the major league level at the end of the season. But I think this is a really good, again, definition of a Scott Harris guy. This dude has pretty solid strikeout numbers and does not walk anybody. He does not walk anybody. And that is something that Scott Harris has talked about a lot. I think it makes a lot of sense. I, I, I think that it, it follows the logic of what we are presuming a Scott Harris type player is to a T. And that's kind of exciting. So I really like this get uh, just to, as far as him as a pitcher. This is pre Tommy John, obviously. No, we haven't seen him. or don't have any numbers on him post TJ because he's still recovering from it. Uh, he And he's also put straight on the 60 day IL. So like he might not even, uh, he, he might not be ready for like opening day of 2023. We, we don't even know what his, his status is and where he is as far as his recovery from Tommy John. But so pre Tommy John, so end of 2021, he had a four seam fastball, a slider and a change up mix. He is pre predominantly out of the pen, by the way, if I didn't say that, I don't remember. So more of a reliever. Um, and yeah, I mean, not, not like overpowering crazy stuff when you talk about velocity, but the change up has a pretty good, it's pretty spinny. It has a pretty good spin rate on it and when you're talking about velo the fastball velo is about 93 miles an hour pretty solid uh the slider is about 83 and the changeup is about 87 so uh middle of the road fastball velo that's right there almost exactly kind of middle of the pack with fastball velocity these days 93 my 94 miles an hour uh his max velo i want to say was pushing 96 down in the minors at one point but again pre tommy john who knows what he's going to look like afterwards Everybody's different. He's also a lefty, which helps a lot. He's 5'11". That was kind of his thing uh, in the draft. One of the reasons that he kind of slipped in the draft was because people were afraid of his frame or whatnot because he's, he's under six foot, and that's like a big deal to people with conditioning of pitchers. But um, 26 years old, like I said, next season will be 27. Yeah, I, I mean, went to Notre Dame for whatever that's worth. So I, I, I kind of like the profile. And again, I'm not going to like pound my fist on the table and go, you know, this – this absolutely needs to to happen, and he needs to be pitching a, a lot of innings at the major league level. And like, I'll be darned if this dude isn't, you know, a, a prominent reliever or anything like that. I'm not saying that, but again, it's a it's a I don't want to say safety net because that's not really what I'm trying to say. But it, it's it gives Scott Harris more options to plug in his players in the 40 man roster when the first round of cuts come along, and uh, there's there's obviously somewhat of a chance that Sean Gunther makes – I almost said Scott Gunther. I've almost called this dude like four different names. That Sean Gunther 
is uh, at least has a, a slim chance, better than you and I, of making the Tigers 40-man roster. So we'll see where that takes us. But I kind of like it. I really do kind of like the profile. I kind of mess with it. Really good command numbers, and that's really the, the biggest thing to take out of that is uh, high strikeouts, low walks, the major league stint not good, but not very high ERA in the minors. Pretty darn solid profile. I really like it. So we'll see what happens with him, but that is – the newest edition of the Detroit Tigers, technically speaking. So there you go. He's straight to the 60-man IL, like I said. Um, so yeah, Sean Gunther. There's his quick little breakdown, and we'll keep an eye on him and, and see if uh, if he's long for the roster or not. Okay, so that's it for him. Let's get to the uh, deep dives for the day. We're going to take a look at a pitcher and a hitter, but first I got to tell you all about our friends over at Simply Safe, if you have thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you'll want to listen up. Right now, Locked On Tigers listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you certainly won't want to miss it. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike nationally? Makes a lot of sense, right? Well, that's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off of their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Simply Safe was named the best home security of 2022 by the U.S. News and World Report for the third year in a row. In emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify a threat is real so you can get the priority police response. Simply Safe is a whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, door, HD security, sick cameras inside and out, smarter ways to detect motion and alert you when a threat is real, and even sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. It really is the best in the business. 24-7 professional monitoring service costs less than a dollar a day, less than half the price of ADT's traditional professional installed systems. With a top-rated Simply Safe app, stay in complete control of your system anytime, anywhere, arm or disarm, unlock for a guest, access your cameras, or adjust system settings. You can do it all from your fingertips. So don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I personally recommend. Get 50% off of any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on tigers today. This is their biggest discount of the year. So don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB, not locked on tigers, slash locked on MLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Uh, I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. I appreciate each and every one of y'all for tuning in. So we are talking about, we're going to do our deep dives. Oh, also, I want to give credit to the article that I found, uh, like one of the lowest walk rates of the Marlins system in recent memory. Uh, that is SB Nation's Marlins page. So that is uh, fishstripes.com. They, they do... A great job over there. We love our friends over at um, SB Nation, the Tigers community as well. So, okay, uh, let's get into the deep dives of the day. Yeah, I don't know why I said that so weird. Let's get to the deep dives of the day. We're going to do Garrett Hill and we're going to do Brendan Davis. Okay, let's do Garrett Hill first. Okay, so pitcher for the Detroit Tigers, obviously, Came up this season. Now, Garrett Hill, at the start of the season, he started off in double A and was absolutely lights out and was one of the bigger stories of the minor league season early on, like the first half of the season. When it came to pitching, at least, it was like Wilmer Flores, Reese Olsen, Garrett Hill. Like those were serious. Like he was in that conversation with those those other two guys who had who had great seasons and Flores especially had a phenomenal season down to the minors this year. And... So Garrett Hill started in double A and just lit it up, had, had an over 14 and a half K per nine, a sub three walk per nine, a two, two, five ERA. 
he was lights out. I, I mean, there, there was no other way to put it. He was striking out everybody, his fastball, especially up in the zone. That was like something that whenever you watched his starts in Erie, like that was something he really liked to go to and, and went to at a really solid clip and, and was successful at, at doing so. So that was uh, an age 26 season, like kind of a make or break year almost for him. And, and he tore it up in double A. So he gets called up to triple A. Gets rocked a little bit early on and then kind of refines, you know, his, his legs from under him. Ends with a 406 ERA, uh, an 11K per nine, a 358 walk per nine. Pretty solid numbers, right? Obviously, not the unbelievable, you know, ridiculous numbers that he was putting up in Erie, but still a, a really solid, uh, a really solid stint, we'll call it, in Triple A for the Tigers, 37 innings in AAA, 32 innings in AA. And then due to injuries and amongst uh, a plethora of other reasons, found his way onto the Major League roster and pitched 60 innings at the MLB level. So had more innings at the Major League at the major league level than any other level this year, and he started off in AA. I don't, I don't think anyone had really had that on their bingo card. But he, he logged some pretty valuable innings. He ends with a 403 ERA, only a 5.97K per nine, and a 4.33 walk per nine. Um, like I said, ERA of just a hair over four. Now, all of his like expected stats, expected ERA, 575. His FIP, a 515. His XFIP, a 556. So got hit pretty hard and did not get a lot of swings and misses. But... That's really, that is why those numbers are bad. But that's also the, the biggest thing this season when watching him. It was like, okay, this dude is not missing bats. <laughs> was not missing bats at the major league level. Again, ha found success doing it in the minor league level. But I think for, from my evaluation where I sit, one of the biggest reasons why he had such a change of, of pace and such a, more difficult time getting swings and misses and getting strikeouts at the MLB level. Besides the fact that triple A to the majors is just a much massive jump, right? The biggest jump in baseball from level to level is that level to, to get to the majors, obviously. Right. But on top of that, I think the high fastball really was like not as much of an option anymore. And he found it a little bit late. We'll talk about that in a second, but it, it, it was one of those things where in the minors he was able to, you know, mid-90s fastball, not anything that's like super overpowering, but 92, 93 with the ab ability to be a little bit faster if he needed to. And he would go up in the zone and have good command. And, and he was able to get swings and misses. And at the major league level, that wasn't an option. And so I think he just, it, it took him a while to find a groove and figure out how he was going to attack hitters to be able to induce swings and misses. And he, he never really found like a go-to and never really had a performance where you were like, oh my goodness, like this, you know, might be it. He has whatever, you know, 15, 17 whiffs or anything like that. But uh, I, I do think that he got a little bit more confident and he definitely bumped the strikeout numbers up a little bit as the season went on toward, toward the end of the year there. Um, but yeah, that, you know, it, it's one of those things where he – him and Fetter just went in the lab and made the most of the situation. And even though the underlying numbers aren't anything spectacular, they're not even that great. Still ending with around a four ERA and just inducing, I don't know, managing launch angles, making sure the ball is hit on the ground, inducing soft contact sometimes. Still got hit pretty hard as far as his, his major league stint goes, but just as a whole, the way that he was able to salvage a pretty respectable season, a four ERA is not bad at all out of the bullpen. And, and a guy that also not only out of the pen at the end of the season, but but logged starters innings for us, right? So uh, I was very impressed and very pleased with what I saw from Garrett Hill. I think the conversation about what to do with him in the future is a pretty fascinating one. So we'll get to that in the third segment. But just wrapping up his performance from this year, um, expected batting average, 11th percentile, expected slug, 4th percentile, barrel percentage, 15th, whiff, 9th, walk rate, 11th, K rate, 6th, chase rate, 19th percentile. So just like bottom, you know, 5th or even 6th in the league in most of these stats. But again, was able to salvage a pretty respectable ERA. And one of the things that I also liked about him was uh, the, the spinniness of his breaking stuff. 
Curveball spin rate, 74th percentile in baseball. We, we, we saw that curve, and I would like him to throw it more. And I, and I, I default to Fetter. If Chris Fetter thinks that he should not throw it more, then he should not throw it more, right? But, but I, I think that that's a pitch that he threw the, the least amount out of his four pitches, fastball, slider, changeup, curve. Uh, through, on, on the major league season, threw it the least amount. Um, and, and I just, I, I really think that there's something there. I, I think that it has a good shape. It's a nice pitch. I don't want it to become the slider. I don't want it to just, uh, the, the fingerings to just mix into one and then just have kind of like a slurve thing. So we, we need to stay away from that. But if he can differentiate and make it clear, this is a slider and this is a curveball. I think that, that that this is a really good pitch that I, that I would like to see him throw a little bit more because it does have such good spin, and I thought the look the command of it was was reasonably solid throughout the season. Um, so yeah, that, I mean that's that's his season, right? Like we we all watched him go out there and, and we saw that he had the ability to to log you know a, a quality start five six innings two wish runs against like that was kind of a prototypical Garrett Hill start and then when he came out of the bullpen at some point in the season he started going over his head with his wind up and that's something that um, Chris Brown and Rahelio pointed out uh, over at Woodwork Tigers that I I was very impressed with um, a th- those dudes just rock but it was super cool to see them talk about it and go like, Oh yeah, like that's that you're right. Like that's, that's correct. I, I'm, I, I totally, his velocity went up a little bit. He was able to reestablish himself up in the zone. I think his extension numbers got a little better as far as just his, his body's extension coming off the rubber, which is something that a lot of people look for. And a lot of people want to be, you know, as long as possible. So you can cut the difference, but the distance between home plate and pitcher's mound. So I, I thought that that was a, a really cool find by them, but but also just for Garrett Hill, like a, a really nice adjustment because that's something that that really helped him. And I, I think, again, added a few ticks to the velo back a little bit, and especially when you're coming out of the bullpen, you want that velocity to be as high as possible because you're kind of emptying the tank every outing. I, I that was that was kind of the the point for me where I was like, oh, you know, like we, we might see some some better numbers from here on out. And they weren't drastically different prior to and and post that adjustment but they were definitely noticeable a little bit so super cool there let's talk about um we'll we'll talk about brennan davis on the other side really quickly that's not a super long conversation we're just trying to get through everybody on the 40 man and then we'll talk about kind of where those two guys fit in the tigers going forward and we'll do that right after this All right, everybody, welcome back here to our third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Not sure why I'm doing that in the third segment, third and final segment. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast from the games that matter, the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard, behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Listen to Locked on Sports Today, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Okay, so uh, let's do Brennan Davis first. Then we'll just get into the future of both of them as a separate conversation. Brennan Davis was acquired on waivers, I believe, um, or minor league waivers, I think, or waivers and then optioned out of the minors. Regardless, from the uh, Angels earlier this season. And what people forget, and it's not that he was ever like this crazy, you know, top 20 prospect in baseball or anything like that. I'm not trying to say that, but people kind of forget that Brennan Davis at one point in the Angels system was actually somewhat viewed upon as like this dude might have a future in this outfield, right? They try to play him at corner outfield or third base or whatnot. And so I, if you remember, the Angels fans were not too pleased when he was let go. Not that it was, uh, you know, the Angels have their own problems to, to deal with, certainly. Uh, so it wasn't like one of the biggest storylines of the season or anything like that. But it, it was somewhere you were like, okay, uh, there were some people that are pretty upset about this. And he really had, at one point, again, he was kind of viewed at as, as a potential future option for the Angels uh, in, in their system. And so... 
when looking at his season, he had a 751 OPS in AAA this year in over 100 games. Those numbers kind of tailed off a little bit at the end. Had a 232 average, a 342 OBP, and a 409 slug. I think ideally you'd like the slugging percentage to be a little bit higher. He had 14 homers. That's not bad at all. Um, 55 walks in 103 games is beautiful. That's a really solid walk rate. We like that. Uh, the batting average is a little low. Not a very good defender and has kind of struggled with finding a, a spot to play defensively for a while. It has played in several positions in the infield. Has played the corner, both corner outfield positions, I believe. Just like people are really trying to figure out a spot to, to put him long term. And he just turned 25 uh, this season. So he'll, he'll turn 26 in the middle of next season. I, I, I mean, look, like this is... I don't think he'll he'll be around next year in the organization. And if he is, it won't be on a 40-man spot. I think it would be like a, a – a, a, we kind of talked about with Daniel Norris, like a minor league deal where you're going to come in, you're going to stay in the organization on a minor league deal. You won't be on the 40-man. And then if injuries or whatever happen and we need you on the 40-man, then you'll be on the 40. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I just – I don't think that a 751 OPS in AAA – and he came up and played in like three games at the very end of the season and, and didn't hit very well in those either. But um, I don't think that's going to be a very high priority, especially for a dude that they're having – Not I don't want to make it sound like, oh, they're having so much trouble trying to find a spot for him defensively. But, like, the, you know, no team has really been sold on him being long-term like anywhere yet. So – uh, I don't know. Um, I, I don't think that this is a, a very high priority, I guess is my point. And if he does come back, it won't be on the 40 man roster. And, and, and all honesty, I, I just, I, I don't think, I think his, he has run his course with the Detroit Tigers. I don't really expect him to be in the organization next year. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And again, if he is, it won't be on the 40 man. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty quick conversation there. Just decent walk numbers in triple a for sure but needs better contact numbers needs better power numbers um and and needs to find a long-term home defensively i think before anybody is really willing to take that risk of giving him a more uh predominant role i mean yeah he's played literally everywhere in the infield in la and the outfield he's been all over the place so i guess maybe you view that as like utility but he's not super, a super plus defender anywhere I don't know that that that's uh I really like the kid a lot and I and I hope he gets an opportunity somewhere. I would love to see him crack somebody else's forty man next season because I, I do still think that there's some talent there. But I don't think with a new regime here and a new influx of talent that's going to come in after the World Series ends that that maintaining Brendan Davis is going to be a a super high priority for this team. I think he's just going to be part of the turnover. That's all. Um, okay, so when it comes to Brent Davis being on the team, we'll say uh, 8% that he's on the 40-man, 0 that he's on the MLB, 8 that he's on the 40, and we'll give like a 12 that he's in the organization and just not on the 40-man. Okay, we'll give him three different <laughs> percentages. Um, and then when it comes to Garrett Hill, so uh, he, he'll be around. Uh, I think when it comes to him being on the 40 man, we'll go with a solid like 68, 70, 70%. Like he'll be around. And, and I know that's a little bit more of a cushion on like maybe not. And I, I'm not like, I don't know anything you don't know. I'm not trying to, to be like the genius in the room here, but I just want to give him a little bit more of a buffer because I don't think he's necessarily a guarantee to be on the major league roster. And so I have much more confidence that the dudes that I know will be on the MLB roster will be on the MLB roster. <laughs> kind of a weird wording, but like for, for a, a guy that I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure he'll be on the MLB roster. I'm not going to put like a, a ton, you know, a 90% or anything on him. So I'll slap a 70 on him again, still think that like, he's going to be back. I'm, I'm fairly, I'm, I'm confident. I am I, like, he will be back, but, just want to give a little bit of a buffer there just in case. Maybe 75, maybe go a little bit higher, but he'll be on the 40 in some capacity. Now, his role next season is where it gets super fascinating. Um, I think that he could be a reliever. 
he could. Maybe you want to make him raise his velocity a little bit until you're really confident that he can be a, a reliever long term. But I think that that's a route that they could take. I think the most likely scenario for Garrett Hill is that he starts off the season next year in AAA as a starting pitcher. I think that that's the most likely scenario. They let him have, start off the season because, again, he kind of got punched in the mouth a little bit when he first came up to AAA last season. So I think I think that they will – and, again, the, the, he won't be a starter at the major league level. I, I can promise you that. On opening day, he, he might log starts again if there's an injury thing or whatnot, but he – He's not going to be in the rotation on opening day. That's a guarantee. So it's really either bullpen at the major league level. Maybe you let go of Tyler Alexander and Garrett Hill kind of fills that role-ish of like spot starter, long reliever. Him and Alex Fiedo a chance to. I, I think I, I just keep going back to I think Alex Fiedo has a better chance of being that long reliever slash spot starter at the MLB level next year, at least early on, assuming health for everybody, than Garrett Hill does right now because Alex Fido A, has a better repertoire that's fit for the bullpen, and B, is just significantly more advanced at the present moment when it comes to getting swings and misses. So I think that that Fido has a better chance of kind of taking in that role than Hill, which is why I kind of lean towards he'll be on the 40-man but it'll be in the starting rotation in Toledo. But we'll see. It's definitely not out of the realm of possibility for him to be at the major league level out of the bullpen next season. It's not a completely foregone conclusion, but I, I just I'm, I'm I'm a lot more confident that he'll be that he'll be in the in the Mud Hens rotation than anything else. So we'll go 70 ish, maybe a little bit higher than 70 that he'll be on the 40 man, and then we'll do uh, uh, what a 35 that he'll be on the major league roster. Yeah, I like that. Okay, uh, I think that's all I got for you. Thanks for making Lockdown Tigers your first listen every single day. For your next listen, check on the Lockdown Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts, just like us. Uh, appreciate y'all. We will be back tomorrow. Maybe the Tigers keep making more moves. Maybe not. World Series is almost over. I was pretty upset at that rain out because that means a, a delay in when our offseason fun begins. So very rude of Mother Nature. Uh, but, man, the Phillies. Team of destiny. I, I mean, I, I would have had the Astros winning this in like five. So I'm, I'm already wrong. Um, I, I still – I think you still got to – Got kind of have to lean Houston, but in the same breath, man, Philly, Philly might just be the team of destiny. They might be go Phil's baby. Don't, don't know too many people that are rooting for the Strohs. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Peace and love going to therapy's dope. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Go Tigers, baby.